The virus is real, and masks work in reducing the spread of COVID-19. Maybe we all need to say this. We, as elected officials, should be responsible enough to say this without it being partisan. It's practical. Sometimes I think how partisan this pandemic has become, and it's truly disheartening. We can and should be having a bipartisan conversation about the next steps forward as a legislative branch along with the governor. This hasn't happened to date. I have too many friends on both sides of the aisle that we can talk about this virus and problem solve, but there's a fear to work across the aisle. Let me be the first to say, not afraid to work with my colleagues, whether they're Republican or Democrat, legislator or governor, this is an unprecedented time, and none of us have dealt with a situation like this before. None of us were alive in 1918 for the Spanish flu. None of us were elected officials trying to make decisions during that time. House Resolution 836, as amended, requires CDC guidelines like masking, social distancing, environmental cleaning and disinfection. And the governor has the authority to go beyond the CDC guidelines. But these requirements must be applied equally. When this started, we all feared hospitals being overwhelmed, watching the situation in Italy and other countries unfold. I supported restrictions early on, fearing for my family, my friends, my constituents, and the Commonwealth as a whole. I feared being unable to treat those who were infected due to a lack of medical supplies. Our nurses, doctors, first responders, grocery store workers, and others in essential businesses truly stepped up to the plate. But there is no guarantee that everyone will be completely safe ever. It is a fact that we must all face. We have to continue to move forward cautiously with everyone taking responsibility for their actions. We as elected officials should set the example by wearing our own masks in public. This isn't partisan, it's, it, it's practical. However, here we are at the end of May and we can disagree with actions being taken without being disagreeable. If any of else tells you they know what's happening, they simply aren't telling the truth. None of us do. It is truly unprecedented. Getting back to this idea of everyone being treated equally, the waivers don't work. It was a misstep by the administration. And privately, I've heard colleagues on both sides of the aisle agree with this. Businesses shouldn't open or close on whether they are politically connected. The power to unilaterally close down a person's place of business without due process is flat out wrong. But not closing down Walmart and Lowe's to avoid dealing with large corporations' attorneys is the exact opposite of social distancing. Anybody with one of those businesses in their area can answer that question. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate these larger stores, but social distancing and other guidelines have not been equally applied there. Equal protection matters. Due process matters. Our mom and pop small businesses matter too. Probably about two months ago, I saw a meme on Facebook that had three circles. One stated, people taking COVID seriously. Another said, people worried about expansion of authoritarian government policies. And the last one said, people very concerned about impending economic devastation. In the middle of these circles where they are interconnected, there was a me with an arrow pointing to that location. This is where I am and where I encourage everyone to be. We need to have concern for our small businesses and the men and women who work there. Wear a mask when you go there, not for your sake, but for theirs. Let's do this together. We can do this together. Let's make sure we take COVID-19 seriously going forward. But let's assert the power of the legislative branch to make sure that businesses are treated equal with all three branches of government involved. 
and let's make sure our businesses are treated fairly and equally under the law. This isn't partisan, it's practical. Please vote for H.R. 836 as amended. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.